Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about the convergence of some key technologies in the geotechnology world. UAVs, Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, or UAS, Unmanned Aerial Systems, sometimes known as drones. Geotechnologies themselves, web mapping tools, including web mapping applications such as story maps. Why am I saying all this? Well, because we've got here a story map with UAV imagery from our business partner, Hangar, for you to examine. And you can use this in research, you can use this in teaching, you can just use this for everyday interest. Here's a current event happening on our dynamic planet, and I can actually examine this. So if I pull up this, this map, I'm seeing some pretty amazing imagery that I can that I can actually zoom and pan on taken from this UAV. So you can see where we are located here uh, in on the Big Island of Hawaii on the east side of it. So if we zoom out even more, you can see where our study area is located. So let's zoom back over there. So this app, as you can see here, features 360 degree imagery from Hangar. You can click and drag each image to pan around the map. So let's take a look at with the story maps, you have this immersive experience. You can make your own story map. Go to storymaps.archis.com and think about the kinds of story maps that you can make on litter in your community, a new proposed bikeway, weather, it could be the trip that you took last summer, it could be coastal erosion. Whatever you're passionate about, make a story map about it and share it with, with friends, colleagues, even with the whole world. So take a look at this one. Kilauea 360 degree imagery. Here's another one. This is stop number two and you can see the lava flowing in the distance there. All right, let's go to stop number three, Kapoho Road, an alternative look. I just think this is amazing to be able to do this. Look at the look at the lava flowing down there and just obliterating all the vegetation in its sight. Looks like it's active up here. This might be a couple days old. It could be a week old, could be a month old. Wow, I encourage you to check this out. Uh, for yourself. This is remnants of previous lava flows uh, out to the west you can see here. Yep. Now a lot of these they've got vegetation growing on them now. Interesting. So they could be quite old. And here's a community with an old flow right next to it but you just kinda wonder what could happen in the future, the Earth being the dynamic planet that it is. Much of the Big Island's southern coast has been shaped by lava flows for centuries into the ocean. You can certainly see that here with these images. Okay, a geothermal energy conversion plant. You can barely see it through the, through the smoke and haze there. There's another view, but gosh, look at that. Curious individuals watch the smoke and steam rising above them, around them. Boy, I don't know. You might want to have an evacuation plan in mind. I'm sure these people do. How are you going to get out of there if you need to? Lava flows have destroyed portions of Luana Street and many roads within Leilani Estates. Yeah, look at these houses. Oh, my goodness. Lava flows slowly roll through Leilani Estates. This is probably the, the one that struck me most completely when I, when I look at this. Look at this devastation, and you can see these, these folks. They've got just a, a couple vehicles still sitting on the property, and the lava is just slowly, or maybe not so slowly in some cases, taking out their whole their whole livelihoods and their whole property there. A line of fissures spews smoke and steam south of Luana Street. Let's take a look at those. There's that line. We've got a couple more to examine. Advancing flows from the east threaten structures. Okay, so there's the structure. There's one of the structures. And there's the flow out there to the east. And number 14, west of Nohea Street. I'm going to expand this view so I'm looking at more of the image and less of the map as much as I love maps. Yeah, look at that. That is uh, 
That's pretty remarkable, folks. Uh, the earth is truly uh, something worthy of study, and uh, we ignore topics of geology and geography at our peril in schools, in my view. But you didn't want to hear me talk about all that. You want to see some images here. But the point is, is that um, we need to be teaching this in our schools. And, and story maps are actually a really good tool to teach with. Now, let me show you another thing that I've got in another video of mine. And that is you can couple this with some Sentinel-2 geology imagery inside a tool called ArcGIS Online. Let me show you what that looks like. So right here, I've got this imagery. Now we're looking straight down from above instead of from a, from a UAV or a drone. We're looking at a, from a satellite much farther up. But if I look at the image display, I've got this short wave infrared is what this is, the geology with DRA is what I'm looking at. So it's, it's part of the infrared part of the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum. And so what I want to do, I'm going to scoot this a little bit back toward uh, the middle here so you can see more of what I'm seeing. Um, let's go ahead and go to the filter. If I go to filter, I'm going to edit the acquisition date. I want to look at May 23, 2018. If I do that, wow, look at that. That is just amazing. So this is not in the visible part of the spectrum. This is what it looks like in shortwave infrared. But you can see this line of fissures that we were looking at in those drone UAV images. There it is right there, pretty stark. Now another thing that uh, you can do with, with this tool inside ArcGIS Online, you can set the visibility. So you're seeing now, I'm seeing the roads where this, as of May 2018, this, this flow was happening. And yeah, it's right here in this in this subdivision and we can also use the measure tool if we wanted to measure for example how many miles it is from here down to the ocean trace along it there it's about three and a half three point seven five miles or uh, six kilometers ish so we've got some tools at our fingertips inside ArcGIS online also we can change the base map uh, to Let's say we don't want the topographic, we want OpenStreetMap. Now we can really see these fissures in OpenStreetMap along with some other streets and houses and so on and so forth with some of the historical flows. We can also change the base map to imagery with labels. So now if we've got imagery with labels, as we make this current image from the Sentinel-2 from the European Space Agency opaque or we can move it to transparent. If we move it to transparent, we can really see these houses that we were looking at in the UAV image and then changing that back now wow yeah we're, we're looking at yep these houses are, are no longer viable so again the convergence of UAV or drone imagery ArcGIS Online a web-based GIS mapping tool from ESRI and satellite images from in this case we've got European Space Agency and some other imagery that's 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 operating with this sentinel too but this imagery with labels that's from digital globe and some other suppliers so we've got a lot of different players in this uh, all working to help people make wise decisions about the planet and also where do i evacuate and how do i evacuate and do i need to evacuate tomorrow so all these tools are actually not just a sort of an academic exercise yeah they're great teaching and resource uh, research tools but they're also helping people make uh, everyday decisions so that's why I love working with geotechnologies because it's, it's fascinating, but it's also helping us make wiser decisions about the planet. Thanks.